It's story time. Have you ever used a GPS? In what ways can you use a GPS? And who is Gladys West? We'll answer all these questions in just a moment, but first, vocabulary. GPS, Global Positioning System, Programming, Provide a computer or another machine with a code instructions for the automatic performance of the task. Determine. Cause something to occur in a particular way. Be decisive. Factor in. Engineer. A person who designs buildings or maintains engines, machines, or public works, who also creates codes. Today, we'll be reading a book called Black Women in Science. Black Women in Science by Kimberly Brown Pelham, Ph.D. A Black History Book for Kids. Black Women in Science. Forward by Dr. Rosetta A. Connor. Illustrations by Keisha Morris. Rockbridge Press. While there are many women we can read about today, such as Bessie Coleman, Katherine Johnson, May Carol Jameson. Today, we'll be reading about Gladys West. Gladys West, born 1930, still presently living. In one way or another, Global positioning systems, or GPS, are part of most people's lives. GPS guides car riders, determines internet search results, affects social media trends, and helps planes land safely. GPS technology was developed by a team of mathematicians who studied earth geometric shapes and its specific placement in the universe. Gladys West contributed to this team by coding and programming satellite data for engineers at the U.S. Navy base in Virginia. She calculated formulas involving gravity, radar, and the planet's dimensions. This research established modern GPS. Gladys West was born in 1930 during the Great Depression in Dinwiddie County, Virginia. As a child, she did farm work in the hot sun. Many African American families in the rural town made their living sharing crops, sharecropping. This meant they picked cotton, corn, or tobacco on soil they did not own and shared the profits with the landowners. The other option was to work in a tobacco factory. Although her family owned their land, neither farm nor factory labor sounded like much fun to Gladys, who disliked working from the sun up to sundown. She wanted to live a different kind of life and promised herself 
to put school first. She said, I realized I had to get an education to get out. So she set out to do just that. I made good grades in all of my subjects. She proudly remembered. Growing up in segregated communities motivated her to work hard in school. There were separate schools for black and white children, and black children were often given old textbooks that had already been used in the white schools. These realities pushed Gladys to work harder to accomplish her goal of leaving farm life behind. She graduated at the top of her high school class and received a full scholarship to Virginia State University. Gladys said, when it was time to go to college, I didn't quite know what to major in. Science, she did well in every subject. People encouraged her to choose something challenging. Gladys chose math. The department was mostly male and Gladys had to prove she could keep up. She said it felt different, not quite as inviting and comfortable as the home economics class filled with young women. Many of the women at her college became teachers, as was expected. Gladys taught too, for a time after she graduated, but her math degree opened doors beyond the classroom. In 1956, Gladys joined the Navy Surface Warfare Center's Dahlgren Division, where she was the second black woman ever hired. There were only four African-American employees in total, and two were men. One was Ira West. He and Gladys soon fell in love and married, but neither let their relationship distract them from their responsibilities. Gladys worked on an important astronomical project that determined Pluto's motion in relation to Neptune. She entered the data into giant supercomputers. She was also tasked with checking these supercomputers' calculations, which were sometimes incorrect. Her reputation for accuracy and attention to details made its way to her supervisor, Ralph Neiman. He recommended Gladys as project manager for the Sea Salt Radar Altimetry Project. Sea Salt was the first satellite that could remotely sense oceans using a special kind of radar. Gladys felt pressure to do things perfectly because there were so few African Americans and women at the naval facility. The civil rights movement was unfolding at the same time, and women activists such as Fannie Lou Hammer, Dorothy Cotton, Diane Nash, and Mary McLeod Bethune we're calling for equality. Gladys felt it was not safe for African Americans who worked for the government to be directly involved in the movement. Still, she felt the need to carry the load of 
always doing things just right to set an example for other people who were coming behind. She spent days and nights determining exact satellite calculations. Quote, Before you sort of whispered and looked at each other or something, but now the world is opening up a little bit and making it easier for women, but they still got to fight. Gladys produced an official 60-page illustrated guide for the Naval Center titled Data Processing System Specifications for the GOSAT Satellite Radar Ultimator. The guide explained her work on using radar to measure the size and shape of Earth and contributing to the accuracy of GPS. The data she collected and processed from satellites helped establish exact locations all over the globe. She worked at the Navy Center for 42 years, retiring in 1998 at the age of 68, and later decided to pursue a PhD at Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University. As she got older, Gladys had health problems, including a stroke and a breast cancer diagnosis. Her sickness made completing her degree difficult, but she still did it. She did not let her circumstances defeat her. She said later, all of a sudden, these words came t into my head. You can't stay in the bed. You've got to get up from here and get your PhD. She finished in 2018. Gladys has remained an active participant in the service work of her sorority. Alpha Kappa Alpha throughout her life. During one of their meetings, the members learned of Gladys's role in developing GPS when her biography was read aloud. Since then, the organization has helped make the public aware of this pioneer. In December 2018, the United States Air Force introduced West into the Space and Missonial Pioneer Hall of Fame during a ceremony at the Pentagon. Explore more. Search for Navy Hidden Hero Gladys May West and GPS on YouTube to listen to Gladys talk. Tips for you? Using colored pencils and paper, create a map of your home and your neighborhood. Thanks for watching.